All right, part two of Second Chronicles for the video, chapter twenty-eight. Wherefore the Lord his God delivered him in the hand of the king of Syria, Second Chronicles twenty-eight verse five, and they smote him and carried him away a great multitude of them captives and brought them to Damascus. And he was also delivered in the hand of the king of Israel, who smote him with a great slaughter. For Pekah, the, the son of Remaliah, slew in Judah a hundred and twenty thousand in one day, which were all valiant men, because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. And Zechariah, a mighty man of Ephraim, slew Massasiah, the king's son, and Azarkim, the governor of the house, and Elkanah, that was next to the king. So now the king's lost his son. He's lost the governor of his house, the one who's in charge of his house. Like David was the governor of the, of the, uh, of the house of the Egyptian there. And Al-Qaeda, which was next to the king, I mean, he was the next position of, of, of government authority. And now he's dead. Because of sin. And the children of Israel carried away captive of their brethren. They're, they're Jews. They're, they're brethren, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But he captives of their brethren 200,000 women, sons, and daughters. And took also much spoil from them. And brought the spoil to Samaria, which is the capital of Israel. So, I mean, the king now, Jews, is sitting there dumbfounded. There are graves. There are loss. There are losses. Riches. Families are broken up. Because he wanted to serve the God of Israel. And who came and did the most damage? The men of Israel. But it, by the way, it gets to, I mean, the fact is, if you're going to stand up to be Christ, your own Christian brethren will be the ones who will stab you too, you know. Get down to that fact. Because you make them look bad. They know how they're supposed to have to live. But they don't do it. So if they can get rid of you, they'll be happy. But a prophet of the Lord was there, whose name was Obed. All right? Before the axe is going to fall, you get a prophet, you get a message. And he went out before the host that came to Samaria, and said unto him, Behold, because the Lord God of your fathers was wroth with Judah, he has delivered them into your hand, Israel. And ye have slain them in a rage that reaches up unto heaven. Look at that. They did such a job that their sins reached up to heaven. The Tower of Babel didn't even reach up to heaven. These sins do. And now ye purpose to keep under the children of Judah and Jerusalem for bondmen and bondwomen unto you, but are there not with you, even with you, sins against the Lord your God? Listen, you guys are sinners. What'd you do this for? That king practiced the same sins that you did. Why did you go there and do that? Call them hypocrites. Who do you think you are? Now hear me, therefore, and deliver the captives again. Let them go. Which ye have taken captive of your brethren, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. For this fierce wrath of the Lord is upon you now. Look at that. Everyone's going to get it now. You know what that means there? In the church age today, we are in a mess. Do you know who's going to get the most loss? I know that don't sound right, but the most loss of rewards for what's going on today? Those who started it. Those people that come up with these little vacation Bible programs so we can just make muda, cash check, or whatever, buy our programs, this is so good for the kids. Man, we don't care about the kids, we just want the money. Those people are going to be more, more vile at the judgment seat of Christ, if they're at the judgment seat of Christ, than those that buy the program. Because there's some people out there really buy the program and they really think they're doing God good. 
But still, they're wrong. Don't you see what I'm saying? Israel started a vacation Bible class. Judah came in. Hey, I'll get the program too. And look what God's saying. Listen, Judah and Israel are doing the same things. And he says, listen, the wrath is against you. You've taken these people captive. You brought these little children in here. You gave them all the worldliness. Now what are you going to do with them? To keep them. Once you change their diapers, you're going to have to change them again. You haven't potty trained them. Now hear me therefore and deliver the captives again, which ye have taken captives of your brethren. For the fierce wrath of the Lord is upon you. Then certain the heads of the children of Ephraim. That's the one where the Bible says, uh, you know, Ephraim joined the idols, let them alone. Azariah, the son of Jananan, and Berchiah, the son of Meshemoth, and Jehoshaphat, the son of Shalmu, sorry, Lord, I mean, the prophecy is ain't wrong. And Amasa, the son of, that's a joke, the thundering, stood upon again, stood up against them that came from the war. War, civil war. How many civil wars have we ran in, into the Bible between the North and South? And America makes a big deal about their one civil war. And said unto them, Ye shall not bring in the captives hither. For whereas we have offended against the Lord already, and intend to add more to our sins and to our trespass, for our trespass is great, and there is fierce wrath against Israel. Look at Israel showing some repentance. God, Ob Obed said, don't, you better get these slaves, these, they're not slaves, but yeah, but you better get these captives out of here. They're our brethren. God is angry with us. So the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the princes and all the congregation. Well, look at that. Israel is obeying God. It's not the king, but Israel. They had some, they had some hope. And the men which were expressed by name rose up, we already read their names, and took the captives with the spoiled clothes of all that were naked among them. They grabbed naked ones. So I guess you say pornography. Spoiled clothes that were naked among them. And arraigned them. Okay, they gave them clothes. And shod them, put shoes on them. And gave them to eat and drink, and anointed them, and carried all the feeble of them upon asses, and brought them to Jericho, the city of palm trees, to them their brethren. Then they returned to Samaria. Look at that. the ones that were naked. They gave them clothes. They gave them food. They gave them drink. They gave them shoes. If you were feeble, they put them on asses. They didn't bring them to Judah. They brought them to Jericho. That's not where they got them from. They should have brought him back to Jerusalem. That's when you do something wrong against God and you have put it away. You have to get it right. If I half did it, God, you know, half is not whole. And holes never have. Never is, never will be. You can't eat a whole pizza if there's only a half. No way, no how. You can't go, oh, I'll go order another pizza. That's not the pizza. It's another one. So you gotta lay you gotta lay sin out right. You gotta tell sin what it is. You can't put it under little colors. You can't put it under little good little names and all that. Yeah, they did what God said what to do, but they should have brought them back to Jerusalem. And apologized to the people in Jerusalem. And said, hey, God spoke to us through Obed that we did wrong. We want to let you acknowledge we're doing what God told us to do. Here's your people. We fed them. We took care of them. Thank you very much. Have a good day. We're going back home. You guys better get right. Because God told us we're not doing right up in Israel. Listen, Jonah went into Nineveh, I don't have to my days and go sit underneath the tree, waiting for the city to destroy, and the city got right.
At that time did King Ahaz send unto the kings of Assyria to help him. He has not gotten right. Syria is an enemy of God. Assyria will take Israel into captivity. When Israel's sins are up to its full, Assyria takes Israel. Israel is used by, I mean, Assyria is used by, by God to pronounce final judgment on Israel, which Israel never got right. Here Ahaz goes now to Assyria, a bunch of heathen. Who have no knowledge of God in the Bible. Have no knowledge of his ways. And for again the Edomites. Had come and smitten Judah. And carried away captives. That's Esau. That's their brother. He's still doing wrong. So God's still sending enemies. And the Philistines. Oh, That's the other side. That's Ham coming in. Also had invaded the cities of the low country and of the south of Judah and had taken Beth Shemesh and Ajalon and Gerioth and Shoko and the villages thereof and Timnah with the villages thereof and Gizmo also the villages thereof and they dwelt there. But not only did they take the, the villages, they dwelt in the land that they were not supposed to be in. Israel's land. Israel has lost lands to the Philistines. That's going on today to the PLO. Israel's losing land. I wonder what's going to happen when God starts having America start losing land. You ever think about that? Texas keeps trying to secede from the Union. California is a bankrupt state. Woe be to America when you start seeing our land but going to others. Then you know you're really following Chronicles. For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz, because of Ahaz, the king of Israel, for he made Judah naked and transgressed sore against the Lord. So Ahaz had had part in it. He's the one he's teaching the people how to do wrong. And Tigath, Tigath Pilnizer, king of Assyria, came unto him and distressed him, but strengthened him not. For Ahaz took away a portion out of the house of the Lord, and out of the house of the king, and out of the princess, and gave it unto the king of Assyria, but he helped him not. He went to the house of the Lord, started grabbing stuff, went to his house, started grabbing stuff, started going to his prince's house and to pay off the king of Assyria, and then didn't do nothing for him. Notice how it meant he goes right in the house of the Lord first. And in the time of his distress, distress, what? Well, he's already had war with Syria. He's had war with Manasseh. He's had war with uh, Syria. He's had war with Edom. He, he has war with Philistine. He tried to bite off the Assyrians that don't work. I would say that's distress. And I think that he didn't have a polls, polls, uh, polls act to take. He's in great distress. And God's causing it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Not if God's not on your side, you will. Well, not. If God's against you, oh boy, I wouldn't want to walk that shadow of death. When God's against you, he's angry with you. Don't go quoting God is love. In the time of distress, he, is, he trespassed. He had more against the Lord. More. He didn't learn his lesson. This is that King Ahaz. <laughs> Look at that statement. This is that King Ahaz. For he sacrificed in the gods of Damascus, which smote him. Nice God. His own gods got him. And he said, Because the gods of the kings of Syria helped me, therefore will I sacrifice to them, that they may help me. So he was taking God's punishment and saying, You know what, God? I don't want to have anything to do with you. Those gods are helping me. 
I'll worship them. Sorry thing. Therefore will I sacrifice to them that they may help me. But they were to ruin of him and all Israel. You know, churches today, they think they're doing right and thinking they're doing what God wants them to do. It's only to ruin. And he has gathered together the vessels of the house of God and cut in pieces the vessels of the house of God and shut up the doors of the house of the Lord. And he made him altars in every corner of Jerusalem. He burned a lot of sacrifices and incense. In every several city of Judah, he made high places to burn incense unto other gods. He's burning incense and provoked the anger of the Lord God of his fathers. Now the rest of the acts of his ways, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And they have slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city, even Jerusalem. But they brought him not into the sepulcher of the kings of Israel. Kings of Israel. They knew the difference. And Hezekiah, his son, reigned in his stead. Look at that. 